Brian Fox on pole for the second time in his career and the green flag is out and they are away. Fox with a fairly good start over Lucas Knight, the outside pole man there. The 85 of Justin Carter starts third and comes in with the points lead, a fairly significant margin over the rest of the field, I think as well. But he's going to fall several positions right at the start. Nick Pericles and Joshua Sikuli in the two go by the 85-74 off into the distance. Few car lengths lead over the eight as they head up the hill. This race may be 51 laps, but Colin McGovern and Caitlin Sang are looking to waste none of it. McGovern goes for a pass on the five through turn three. Caitlin Sang briefly takes a look to make it three wide, thinks better of it. Uh, Caitlin Sang, of course, with the five place grid penalty due to actions at Pocono. Henrietta Fitzwater uh, just in front of uh, this pack of hungry drivers uh, would have started nearly on pole if it wasn't for a 10 place grid penalty from Pocono as well. Uh, that's Jeffrey Fingai making it three wide up through the middle uh, between Al Lagacy and John Gambit. Really shoves the five out wide, but he will uh, make up the spot. It looks like he's going to get Al Lagacy as well. He's, he's looking to join his teammate Skyla Johnson up near the top five. Nick Pericles up the inside of Lucas Knight heading into the 90. Haven't seen the 84 up near the front too much so far this season. Hasn't won since back in 2015, but going from fifth to second in the first three laps is uh, certainly promising in that regard. Pericles with an aggressive move to the inside has entered the S's that could have ended in tears. But they're still side by side as we come out. William Duncan getting slipstream from both of them. Hopefully won't make it three wide or something silly. But I'm, I'm sure he has the experience to know better than that. Especially on lap number four. Fox gives the 84 room and Pericles to the race lead. Fitzwater Sr. to pit road at the end of lap number four. Definitely not a scheduled stop. Got into the wall off of turn 11 back there on lap one. I went for a brief spin, delegating him to the back of the pack. Since then, has made no progress, and I guess they're bringing uh, him in for either a change of tires or to repair some of the left side damage. Small Nozomi is on a tear so far this race. Goes to the inside of Colin McGovern down into turn number one. And Nozomi generally not known as that much of an aggressive driver, but she's really put her foot down so far this race going from 35th to just cracking the top 20 we're only on lap number seven as well nozomi has posted the fifth fastest lap time so far this race and despite the fact that she's working through all of this traffic that's that's very very impressive Brian Fox looking to replicate what Pericles did to him just a few laps ago. Down into turn three. Sixes nose in, but cannot make the pass. Pericles just so strong on these straightaways. Brian Fox has continuously been able to get to the 84's rear bumper, but no farther. Um, despite the draft down these long straightaways, the 84 team must have that motor wound up real tight. Colin McGovern, Small Nozomi, and Antivia Kingray three wide out of the outer loop. And the 42 goes around, but not quite. Gets saved a little bit by the 81, but avoids hitting that wall that would have sent McGovern back into traffic. What an amazing save by McGovern. Really drove the wheels off of that thing. I bet you he flat spotted the tires, but he will keep it going for now. That's, that's insane. Mifuni Sanjuro has had a really rough weekend so far. Qualified dead last in the six car and the struggles continue as he's going to get into the wall in turn 11. Goes for a quick spin similar to the Fitzwater Senior earlier on. Mark Nutt gets held up a lot. He had nowhere to go there with cars driving by him on the inside. Jake Baskinger has started off the race fairly well. Currently running ninth. In the 10 car, the 85 got to the inside and pretty much just dumped the 10 around there. Skyla Johnson also with a little bit of a piece. The 10 is going to get that thing turned around without uh, too much trouble. No one else really with any significant damage, but that's really going to hampen Bassinger's efforts in this race. I imagine he'll have to pit because of that front end damage. Otherwise, he could have some heating issues. Uh, this track, a very fast one, very hard on the motor. 
Another look from the helicopter cam. Carter got to the inside of the tent, and I think he thought Skyla Johnson was already there when she very clearly wasn't. Got down into the 10 car, moved down quite a bit uh, to get into Baskinger there. Kind of a lack of spatial awareness, and I imagine the Hark officials are going to have to take a look at that one, which is a pretty big deal considering Carter's the points leader. Then Evenhoven running 29, trying to run down some of the vehicles in front of her that are battling for a position pretty heavily there. Harvey and Faber nearly got together, but Van Evenhoven into the wall. Looks like he just outdrove the corner a little bit there. Perhaps was following Faber's line a little too hard, and Faber's already been in the wall, so he's he's definitely not one of the best drivers to follow around the Watkins Glen circuit. The top two of Fox and Pericles have separated themselves by a considerable margin over Lucas Knight and the rest of the front few drivers. Jeffrey Fingai and Joshua Sikuli are definitely part of the reason why the gap is so big as they've been racing fairly hard. Brian Fox nearly got into the wall on the exit of the bus stop there. A very strange line, but I don't think he lost too much time, surprisingly enough. Mike Wisnowski up, uh, nearly up into the top five as well. Beginning to close up on pit stops, we're at lap number 20, and Brian Fox still has been unable to challenge the 84, can get to his bumper, but cannot go any farther. And I think for a lot of these guys, their best bet to get by Pericles, as things currently stand, is going to be on pit road, because Pericles is really, really quick out front. Will Hoyt and Sanjuro, some of the first cars to hit pit road, and they're going to come out right in the midst of the leaders, it looks like. Neither of them have had particularly good starts to the race. Both of them in, have been in the wall at least once. And Will Hoyt's actually going to merge in between Pericles and second place Lucas Knight, who's gotten by Brian Fox in the number 74. Sanjuro's going to merge right in front of her teammate, William Duncan. Nick Pericles has been held up by the 81 of Caden Van Evenhoven, another one of those temporarily a lap down cars, and he smartly decides that this is a good time to hit pit road. Brian Fox in the number 74 is going to take over the race lead, Knight now into second. It's been a while since Fox has held the lead, but he holds it for all of 10 seconds as Lucas Knight drives right on by as he goes wide in turn one. Lucas Knight hits pit road the next lap by. That'll hand the lead to Finn Guy. Sang into the wall a little bit. Torres into the wall even harder and goes for a brief little spin there. Derek Hamill heading to pit road. Scott Roush with no spatial awareness there. Plows into the rear of the 34. Hamill made it pretty clear that she was going to have to check up on the inside line there to get down to pit road. But, um, well... That'll have to be investigated a little bit, I imagine. Has the undercut worked for Nick Pericles? No, Lucas Knight with the lead, and by quite a significant margin, probably a solid second or so as they head up the S's. Pericles is still going to have a little bit more speed than him, but the 8 crew has got to be patting themselves on the back for that one. They got that 8 car in and out lightning fast, especially considering their Nick Pericles held up the 8 car a little bit on on his own entrance to pit road uh, a couple of laps ago. Kiloa Hankins in the zero is one of the last cars out yet to pit and it looks like some of the inexperience along with some pretty hardcore tire wear uh, caught up to Kiloa as he is struggling to get that thing back on the racetrack after taking a bit of a pounding to the wall there. How about Fingai or Sang? Do either of them have the opportunity to take over the race lead upon exit? Here comes Fingai out, is it, out of his stall, but he makes some contact with the five of John Gambit as Gambit has to go to his stall right in front of Fingai's. Uh, Fingai with a, probably a little bit of damage to the left side of that vehicle, but he is back out on track nonetheless, and it looks like he's going to be side by side with Nick Pericles. No, Pericles just through into second past the 92. Still a phenomenal stop by Finn Guy's team as Pericles is slowing. Pericles is slowing to the outside of the racetrack. 
terminal engine damage to the 84 ignition failure as he kind of coughs his way around the two and a half mile road course real shame I, I said earlier how strong the engine under the hood of that number 84 car was maybe they just tried to get too much out of it Nick Pericles trying to keep that car out of the way of his fellow competitors but he needs to get down to the pit lane and that means cutting across in front of Matt McIntyre, narrowly avoiding the number 84 Matt McIntyre did before hitting the turn 11 wall and briefly spinning the car kind of all on his own there. Tyler Faber has spun just behind as well. Faber was side by side with Fitzwater for 29th heading into the last corner and this is not his first rodeo into the outside wall there as pit crew in fact had just finished fixing some of the damage from his last incident there. Fitzwater Sr. got a little bit of a piece and well that's another nail into the coffin for the 85 of Carter. Carter already under investigation for the Baskinger incident not only is that not going to look good on top but it appears that the 85 has some terminal damages. He's just limping that thing into turn one now. Uh, it's been a really unfortunate day for Tyler Faber. Normally a very good road racer and he hoped to make this a memorial uh, event for Gerald Reddington. Uh, he's driving a paint scheme dedicated to Reddington, similar to Reddington's Canex scheme. Reddington, of course, had to retire at the beginning of the 2017 season due to a water sports injury suffered over the off season. Finn Guy with a really good run off the last corner and here he comes with a challenge on Lucas Knight down into the 90. Looks like he's going to get it in the 92 and this is the first time he's been able to lead under non-pit cycle conditions. Brian Fox into second. I'm sure Finn Guy would love to win this race especially with Skyla Johnson, his protege, winning last week in Pocono. Lucas Knight takes a peek to the inside of the 74, thinks better of it. The 74 runs quite wide as does the 8 and the 83 makes some contact with the 8 but manages to get two positions on the exit of the bus stop. That is not a corner you typically see passes made on but Duncan, the eternal road ringer, one of the eternal road ringers in the field just made that stick like a pro up to second right behind Jeffrey Finguy. Brian Fox wants that second place back from the 83 of Duncan. Goes to the outside, hanging into turn 11. The 83 goes to block, and the 8 takes advantage of this. Dropping to the inside, the 74 tries to hold it up high, but cannot. And he gets into the wall and spins that car briefly, pushed back to around 7th or so. And he just lost a lot of time. And it doesn't look like he's going to have a chance at the race victory after all. Real shame for the pole sitter. In the last lap, Lucas Knight has gotten by the 74 of Brian Fox, who ended up spinning the car, by William Duncan in the 83, and now perhaps by Jeffrey Fingai to retake the race lead. Yes, the 8 car back to the front. Duncan struggling to keep up with the top two, runs it wide in turn 10, where he had the incident with Torres last year that he probably wants to forget in turn 11. He messes up, gets into the wall, and gets clipped by Sikuli in the two car. A lot of rear end damage, a lot of left side damage, and that could take Duncan out of the running for a top five finish. In fact, depending on how much that damage might be affecting him, which it looks like quite a bit, uh, he might have to pit that car and risk falling out of the top 20. Pit reporters have confirmed that Duncan will be heading to the pits this lap. Sikuli also looks like he has some terminal damage in the two cars. He's slowing on the back straightaway. This could be bad. He's stuck on the inside on the entrance to the bus stop and John King nowhere to go. In the 19 car the 03 spins, the 23 spins. There could be oil down on the track. The 03 swerves to avoid the two. I think it was just the swerving motion that took the 03 and the 23 off the racetrack. And he struggles actually a little bit to get back to the racing line, hitting the wall there. Mike Viznovsky into the back of him lifts the 03 car clear off the ground. That's That was a bizarre incident between those two, but it could well take both of them out of the race along with the, the two and the 19. A new challenger has emerged within the top three, and that is Caitlin Sang in the 07 car. She watched patiently, quietly behind the top four 
as they raced for position and then they dwindled to three and then two with the successive spins of Fox and Duncan and now is immediately going for a charge on the eight of Lucas Knight. Very difficult place to make a pass there. The S's, but the 07 tries regardless. This is Sang's second road course start in the Hark series, but she impressed very much so in her first road course effort. A little bit of contact between the 8 and the 07 as Sang struggles to keep it on the course through the carousel. She does so, though. Uh, as I was saying, Sang finished third at Brasstown Bald and is now up to second with just Jeffrey Fingai in the way between her and a home state victory. The 66 of Sam Curtis has had a quiet yet successful day in the 66 machine. Started off the race in 41st place. Just was really not confident heading into this race. Kept things nice and clean where he was. Stayed out of trouble and because of that, he's now got a chance to get inside the top 20 and challenge Small Nozomi for the hard charger bonus. Sang looks low on the 92, heading into turn number two. Fingai tries to shut the door, but can't get there in time. And Sang is on rails through this section of the course. Up the up through the S's, it looks like the 07 will clear the 92 before they even hit the back straight. That is got to be a little bit scary for both of these two. Probably didn't even consider Caitlin Sang to be part of the picture. A few laps prior to this as that's Knight going to get by the 92 but they're holding each other up and that's allowing Sang to quickly open up around a half second lead. Fingai pushed back to third by Sang and Knight. He's not giving up though he runs it hard into turn 11 but too hard and he misses the apex. It gets into the wall similar to Duncan and Fox. Damn it, I'm sorry. That was on me. Even I can't even do anything right. Really? From there? Come on. Really interesting that turn 11 has been catching out even some of the more veteran drivers like Finguy and Duncan. Caitlin Sang and Lucas Knight held up by a couple of lap cars as they come to seven to go. Demax is slower than Fitzwater, but Sang's trying to go around the outside of Fitzwater before switching back to get Demax, but can't quite get there. And Lucas Knight's going to go down to the bottom to try and use Demax as a pick, heading into turn one, aptly called the 90, as Caitlin Sang tries to get by the 90 car, the eight to the lead, the 07 nearly into the side of the 90, and I imagine shaking her fist out the side of that 07 seven car as she's gonna have to run down the eight quite a bit of a gap there between the two leaders now more lap traffic for Knight and Sang to deal with it's the 85 and the 07 still trying to get by Fitzwater Fitzwater is actually fairly on pace with these top two leaders and Sang manages to get two heading into the bus stop very aggressive move but necessary if she's gonna keep up with Lucas Knight for these final five laps Similar to most of his 2016 Hark USA Championship bid, the Flying Dutchman has stayed out of the spotlight, but r runs very, very well. Currently in fifth spot, but not for long as he gets overtaken by Sebastian Torres with a little bit of contact there through the bus stop, still side by side, both racing for this spot like it's the final lap, not too far off to be honest, it's we're about four laps to the finish, but uh, very good runs by both Piet and Torres, deserving runs as well for both of them. Caitlin Sang reeled in the eight car a couple of laps ago, since then has stayed right on his back bumper. Whether or not that's for convenience or not, we're about to find out. White flag is out. We've had 50 laps of thinning the herd. Now it's one to determine the victor between these top two. Neither of them have won a race before. It's Lucas Knight of British Columbia versus Caitlin Sang of New York. Sang's been so strong in this section of the course and gets to the inside of Knight up through turn two. Knight, very strong and smooth on the throttle, heading onto the back straight and Sang has to fall back into line. And Tevia Kingray is being caught in a real hurry. She's four, he's four seconds a lap slower than the leaders. Whether or not he'll have an impact on the victory is yet to be determined. Sang still all over the back of the eight car as they enter the carousel and here comes the 07 with a move to the inside nearly makes contact with the eight and the eight 
forced out on to the curbing there. And Seng might be able to clear the eight, heading into the second to the last corner. That would be optimal for the New Yorker, but she runs a little bit wide. And here comes the eight car. He's going to be set up well for the final corner. Can Seng get, his, get her nose in? Not quite, but Knight runs a little bit wide. Out of the final corner, Seng with one final charge to the line. Knight wins it, though. 5 hundredths of a second was the gap between first and second at the line. Knight gets the race victory as Sang falls just a little bit short of winning in front of her home crowd. It'll be the second podium in a row for Skyla Johnson, finishing a very quiet third, nine seconds back of the top two. Jeffrey Fingai gets outraced by his protege, but manages to hold on to fourth despite uh, hitting the wall and going for a spin. Sebastian Torres fights his way to a fifth place finish where he probably should have finished last year. Robert Piet finishes sixth. Brian Fox holds on to a seventh place effort. It's Demir Bejenov going to eighth at the end of that one. Bill Littlejohn makes his way up to ninth and DJ Curtis rounds out the top ten.